To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Welcome to the Magic on Main Street podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Tabitha. Over the better part of a decade, our little family has lived the Disneyland lifestyle. As an ex-cast member and now longtime annual pass holders, we've been surrounding our lives with Disney. From Disney bounding to pin trading, exclusive items and all the food, we've fully immersed ourselves in the culture that Walt built. We've done it all and have made some great friends and memories over the years. We'll be sitting down with friends and other Disney junkies to share our stories and advice. We'll be your one-stop shop for Disneyland history and trivia and all the insider information you could ever ask for on merchandise, food, shows, attractions, and everything else you should know about the parks. Our goal is to bring a little magic to your ears each week by sharing our Disneyland journey with you. This This is is Magic Magic on on Main Street. Street. And here you may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Hey everyone, I'm Sean. I'm Tabitha. And this is the Magic on Main Street podcast. Thank you so much for joining us and listening in. And thank you so much to everybody who's coming back for the third time. This is episode Episode three. three. We have three episodes. I know, it's crazy. So we did our promo (laughs) episode, which kind of talked about, about, you know, a bit who we are, how we came to be, uh, a little bit about our relationship, why we are Disney freaks. Um, And then episode one, we talked about... All, all the, the food. food, all the food. Uh, I'm still recovering from the Festival of Holidays <laughs> food tour we went on. Oh man, that was good stuff. But anyway, yeah, episode three, and we are going strong and having a blast. And thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, we know your time is valuable, and spending it with us means the world to us. So thank you. Um, today we've got some really cool stuff. It's got a we got another pack show. I'm so excited. You know what I'm finding out about this podcast? What? There's never a lack of things to talk about when it comes to Disneyland. There's always so much happening. Even if it's like little things, it's a bunch of little things. So much. And it's so funny because we've been doing Disneyland trips for the past solid seven years. We took a couple years off, but you know, five of the seven years. And we... We did not do this much research for our our own trips. Mm -mm. Um, And I'm finding out why. There's a lot to know. Yeah. It's it's so much information. So our big goal is to wrap all that up in a nice little package in, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and kind of spread it to your ears. Exactly. And I would always wonder why like it felt like we were missing out on so much. We were. Because there's so much happening that you don't even think about. Yeah, absolutely. And even when it comes down to like when you're thinking about the merch by itself. Like there's so much or food. Always food. There's always something special going on. And I know they've amp- uh, ramped it up over the past few years, but you know, there's a lot to know. So that's why we're going to keep doing this. I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So today on today's show, uh, we're going to be talking about upcoming ride news, Disney plus shows, new merchandise, upcoming events, and our big topic today, because this is the Christmas episode, Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. So hold on, (laughs) get ready. We're going live with episode number three. Well, that was fun. Yeah. That was was a good little song, a little ditty. (laughs) I like it. should put my song in there. It may be. We'll see what happens. <laughs> my song's really good. So getting right into it, we've got a lot of news. Um, there's a little attraction that opened up in Walt Disney World last week, two weeks ago. What day is it? Oh my gosh, it's Christmas. It's almost Christmas. Um, Rise of the Resistance has been trucking guests through a galaxy far, far away in Walt Disney World, and it is now... And it's been an official date, but they've made a made this bigger news, I guess, now. Because if you look in the app, everybody who has their Disneyland app, but go yes. and open up your map. You get a and little You're going to see a little icon there. It says Rise of the Resistance, uh, launching January 17th, 2020. So It looks really cool, too. There's no going back now. There's no turning back now. <laughs> you're creepy. Reminds me of something. Can't quite put my finger mm. on it. So, oh, we didn't do our introduction. <gasps> Can't forget. We failed. So we don't have the resident cute kid here with us She's tonight. She's on vacation. She's on vacation. But we do have 
the man, <laughs> the ears of the podcast, the yeah. colonel. It's Daniel Proc. <laughs> okay, so that's one. But so but, for those wait. of you, okay, so for those of you that <laughs> have been wait. listening along. We made a rule in our promo episode that we would only have a limited amount of rap horns because it could get a little aggressive and we don't aggressive. want to mess with people's heads. It could, it's a lot. It's so magic. we made a decision that we were only going to have three rap horns. Well, first we said two and we then I weaseled two. my way into but three. Because we have Daniel. Yeah. And he has to have one. Yeah. So we decided on one each, but f- there's been some feedback. We've had requests. We've already gotten requests for the rap horn. Which is could be really obnoxious, but so uh, one of our friends, Damaris, 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 Dam, we call her Dam. Uh, she requested how many? Five, five, five rap horns per episode. She loves them. She did. She did. Lo- she loved them. She, we were hanging out with her the other night. Her uh, so little backstory. She was one of our crew members in our little social club, the Wonderlanders, Aww. and. Uh, so we had a little get together at her house for Christmas the other night, and she was rap horning it up. Heck yeah! All night long, we had rap horns like every two Just, seconds. It was crazy. So we've decided that we will do a test run of five rap horns per episode. Yes. I can't believe we're even talking about this. I was great. Oh geez. Uh, well, yeah. while, hang on. Pause yes. while we're talking about her, since we love our friends and we love to promote them. If anybody in like the L.A. San Fernando Valley sort of area is ever looking for some baked goods, follow her on Instagram, Sugar Crush Bake Shop underscore. She makes the most delicious yummies and they're so cute. She does a lot of Disney themed stuff, too. So go ahead. Check that out. Follow her and order stuff. She's always willing. And you can find her on Instagram at Sugar Crush Bake Shop underscore there you go and fun fact chances are you've already eaten one of her desserts you probably have because she used to work at a very magical place the disneyland bakery yeah good times so that was a wild tangent i just had to give a little shout out yeah no we we went from uh rise of the resistance (laughs) to rap horns to To baked goods Oh, we have one more special guest here today. Do we? Yes. Oh, we do. You're right. So She's in addition a... to Scar the Kitten, our little magical, magic a on Main Street boy. Uh, mascot, we've got... The Chunky Monkey. Yeah. Stella. Stella. The English Bulldog. She is... You may every once in a while hear a snore or a snort in the background. Promise I didn't fall asleep. That's just her living. Yeah. <laughs> that's just her her everyday poor little girl everyday living that's just how she breathes it's fine she's happy it's aggressive at times but, but she's okay she's, the she's fine she's so she's sweet so happy. she's staying with us for christmas because our friend is off in Paris. Gay Paris. oh yeah. oui 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 ha, ha, ha. <laughs> i feel like that's so like derogatory it but is, it's just and i don't mean it in a bad way. i don't mean it in a bad way it's just every time i think of france or french i think of a french <laughs> chef that goes ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay back to it back to it rise of the resistance yes. uh as we just mentioned it did make it onto the disneyland app map a uh, cool little icon there launching january 17th 2020 so cast members have been going uh, through training for it, right? Mm-hmm. They're going through it right now as we speak. Um, it's, I hear it's a pretty, pretty big uh, attraction to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're saying that this is the biggest ride stage or ride building um, that they've ever seen at Disneyland. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's huge. Oh, I'm so so they were saying that, you know, getting back and forth from one side to the other is quite a task because it's huge. That's gonna there's be a lot to know. Uh, so cast members have been training on it and they've already experienced it firsthand. Uh, those in Walt Disney World, guests and cast members alike have seen this ride. And I've been staying away from everything. And I promise you little folks at home, we will be covering this ride. Yeah, I'm avoiding it right now. But <laughs> not until we can experience it firsthand. I don't like living through Instagram no. videos and talking about it. So I wouldn't That's be able why to make I, it like, good. I don't really like watching people's concert videos. Cause I'm like, no. Hey, neat. 
I and, can just turn on iTunes and yeah. listen to the song that you're showing yeah. me. <laughs> and I feel like this is going to be, you know, it's, it'll be a service to those that can't see it for themselves anytime mm-hmm. soon and want to know what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to report on this without actually seeing it. No, I'm not going to base not it down. off somebody's, somebody else's opinion. But anyway, we'll be talking about Rise of the Resistance more as uh, as things Just unfold. Just a couple weeks away. January 17th is not that far away. We're, oh, how scary is that to think about? I know. We're going to be in Whoa. 2020. I'm not ready. We are in the future now. What's next? Oh, Star Tours. I was going to say hello. Yeah, Star Tours Star is Wars. new and improved. Uh, you can join the battle with an all new journey based on Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker. And they're going to have new sequences, new missions. You're going to see some fun stuff from the movies. I'm excited because probably one of my favorite sequences right now is when you end up in Batu. Yeah. So being able to see something new from something we just watched yeah. will be really cool. No, absolutely. And uh, we, we're, we're going to talk about Star Wars Episode Nine: Rise of Skywalker, but not here. Uh, we've decided we're going to do a little, little bit of an offshoot when we talk about these kinds of things. So big news on maybe Disney Plus or movies that have come out in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, anything that's not Disneyland. And we're going to be having a little side conversation and we will be giving you more information on that as it comes about. But we have a name. What is it, Sean? Oh, it's just Magic on Main Street off the beaten path. <gasps> Your sound effects are so <laughs> corny. It's, I'm cueing I Daniel. It. I love it. Oh, right, right. <laughs> we got to get the kernel on it and make sure he knows where to put the... the, 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 the ding. Um, so, yeah. So, it's going to be it's gonna be cool to talk about that. But I have something to talk about when it comes to Disneyland and Rise of Skywalker. What? Well, I can't talk about it here. That's not oh. the place for it. Okay. And also, no spoilers. So... Keep an eye out because in there will be heavy spoiler warnings. Heavy. I, we will give warnings. Listen at your own risk. You are not allowed to be mad at me if for you deciding but to listen. We're to really good. If there's anything that we do well, it's we always preface spoilers. We always we'll give a put, warning. We'll put like eh, eh, yeah. eh, alarms beforehand. Or, uh, like uh, like on the office. Warning. warning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you hear warning. That, that means, means stop listening stop if you listening. haven't fast forward listened 30 to seconds. Scene, whatever. Ooh, that could be a fun talking. game. We could do like a spoilers coming fast forward now. And then we have 30 seconds to talk about it before it gets to the next. Oh, gosh. But then as soon as oh, we get to the other 30 seconds, we I just, know we won't be done talking yet because it's who we no, are. We have we'll to have stop. to be like, you have to fast forward one more time now. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, um, another thing in the news, and this is not Disneyland, but it's got some bleed over. For everybody who is not started to watch this new series on Disney plus the Mandalorian. What are you doing with Please your life? Please Do yourself a favor and watch this show. It's a blast. Sean and I have already gotten baby Yoda tattoos. Like get it. together. Yeah, we did not like, yeah, that's, I wasn't even joking. No, we <laughs> did. We got them. Yeah. I mean, we didn't go looking for those tattoos. No, they were just, they were just there. So cute. And they I were so cute. And myself. they're, they're, they are Disney because they yeah. have, uh, he's eating a little, he's Mickey eating a Mickey ice cream, ice cream bar. They're adorable. It's my favorite. But, um, oh, where was I even going with that? Mandalorian. Mandalorian. So it's if you have not started already. watching this show, yeah, you have until Friday to get all seven of those episodes in because it is the finale and people are not being kind with the spoilers online. No. So if you don't want to know what's going on. I saw a bunch of people on Facebook super upset because people had spoiled Rise of Skywalker, Rise of Skywalker yeah. like the day before. And I just want to know who they're friends with to where they were able to find out spoilers the day before because we're in the 501st. We know people who were there and maybe I'm just friends with all the nice people because I didn't see a single thing about that movie. I didn't see a single spoiler. No, but not at all. I'm not really on Facebook either. I am. I didn't see anything on I'm Instagram. Very, I'm very active on the Facebook and the Instagrams. And I didn't see a single spoiler. No, and I didn't see And we're friends any. with a lot of people who got to go yeah. to the premiere. Yeah. But I guess we're just, we're friends with the good ones. That was ones. a weird Star Wars flex, bro. I, come at me. We know people that went to a premiere. <laughs> <laughs> we are aware of people that have done this in their lives. But really, though. But no, seriously. So don't be those people. Yeah. Well, one. Yeah. Don't spoil things. Come on. Give people a chance, especially on something like this. 
huge. That people have been waiting their lives Literally for? their entire lives. Literally. Stop 42 it. years. Um, oh, I was like, you're only 40. Well, I'm 40. but <laughs> Sorry. I was trying to else. age you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you have not seen it, go check it out now. Finale is on Friday. Um, we've been watching it on Thursday nights at like midnight because oh sometimes they're I fell dropping. asleep during one of them and you were like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm yeah. sorry. You got to see on top of it. I don't want to take a chance of this stuff getting ruined. I'm too afraid to hear anybody talking about it like out on the street because I can't be like, hey, you shouldn't talk about that here. Like it's yeah. their lives. They can talk about whatever yeah. they want. Yeah. But I mean, you choose where you listen, but you also don't want it to be just thrown in your face. Also, so. don't be those people that talk about spoilers in the lobby of a movie theater as people oh, are about to go into the movie. That's the, that's the worst because oh, I know you're worst. amped and you're like, well, I want to talk to everybody that I went with about what I just watched. But wait till you're in close quarters for things yeah. like that. I mean, the moral Anything of the story. Anything else is fair game. Don't talk about it in a movie theater lobby. The moral of the story is don't ruin movies for people because, you know, some, some people, that's all they have. And you're running out of time on The Mandalorian. If you haven't watched it by now, we're almost eight episodes deep. Yeah. You, you're going to get some spoiler action. Yeah, it's going to happen. So, again... You've got you've got some time. It's the holidays. Take a break. It's it'll take three and a half hours. That was a really loud snort. Everybody probably heard Stella because that was a long oh, one. That's a good she, one. She did one of those like <gasps> breaths and it was a snore the whole time. Yeah. Um. So. What were we where were we going with this? Oh, so, yeah. Watch the Mandalorian. Don't spoil things because people that spoil movies are the worst. The Yeah, I did. <laughs> Is that what? It I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is, is is mixing our our podcast, but also taking pictures of the cute dog. <laughs> We're gonna put up a picture. We will. We'll have a picture of Stella on our I'll Instagram, put some ears so everybody on can her see what. Yeah, we can put some ears on her, so everybody can see what she looks like for everybody She's listening. Um, great. All right. Well, that's the news. News. The news. Bow. Dang. What a great song. So many jingles. <laughs> <laughs> I got awkward for a news. second. What's next? Merchandise. Ooh. Merchandising. Merchandising. So what's coming up with with all the merchandise? Um, recently the new a new set of ears arrived at the resort. The red sequin mini ears arrived. Um, and that's red. Okay, red in color. Yes, they also, are red in color, but it is red with two D's for red from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, but they're not. I mean, well, it, that's what they're named after. But there's not. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing about pirates with. I mean, it's just a bow. Yeah. So according to Walt Disney World News Today, um, this is talking about Disneyland Resort. It said that they were previewed back in November and they're themed towards red from Pirates of the Caribbean. Ooh. Oh, you almost did it. I don't like that. You almost you almost went hard. Yeah, far. I didn't like that. Pirates of the Caribbean. I yeah. can't say Caribbean. No. Ugh. A couple of the Imagineers were saying it on the Imagineering story. Blech. It was weirding don't me out. Don't say it. I was like, you um, can't say that. So <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. So um, according to Walt Disney World News Today, um, they are being sold across the resort in Disneyland, Disney California Adventure, and at World of Disney and Downtown Disney. Um, and it looks like this is a fairly new article that I was reading earlier. Um, and people are saying that they've been fairly easy to find. And they will have them out for quite some time. It doesn't look like it's like a limited time release or anything like that. Um, because there was something on there talking about how It'd be something nice to get for Valentine's Day. Yeah. Hint. Hint, hint. hint. Yeah. <laughs> or. Uh, and they're really pretty. It's like a bright, like candy apple red. It's it's really, really pretty. So I'm going to rename them. I'm just, I'm branding them myself. Okay. They are no longer the red ears for Pirates of the Caribbean. They could have gone a little bit more current and said that they're the Sith Trooper ears. Oh, not everything can be about Star Wars. I though. know, but they fit. That's true. You're if right. the bow fits. So many dad jokes. I hate it. <laughs> Speaking of like dad jokes and puns, did you see that? Um, there was a video that Disneyland put out about 
two skippers from the Jungle Cruise going and doing jokes about Haunted Mansion. It was they came out back in September, but it just came across yeah. like our it's, feeds it's recently. It's painful. Sean, the whole time, every time they told a joke, he looked up and just shook his head at me. Yeah. It was, <laughs> he looked so defeated. I'm a big fan of puns and, and dad jokes. Like they're, they're, you know, they have their place, but this was bad. I liked it. I mean, I don't want to knock anybody's work. It was, I'm sure it was, it was great, <laughs> but I just, I, it was very deep in the puns. It, there, yeah. I, I feel like every single sentence was a pun. Yeah. Which I mean, do what you got to do. Yeah. Thanks for trying. I mean, it was a great, it was a great effort. I, I, I enjoyed the video for what it was, but it was, it was painful at moments. Um, also, Christmas is still available, right? I mean, obviously. Christmas yes. is going until January 6th. January 6th. That's the end of the holiday season for the Disneyland Resort. Which I'm assuming that's when they stop selling the, dis- the, the merchandise. I would assume so, but... Then, if you guys have any friends that are cast members, maybe everything goes to Company D and you can swoop it real cheap. Maybe. That would be great. I don't know. We've got a couple people. I think we just put our people on blast. I don't know anybody. I'm not putting any names out there. No. No (laughs) names. Um, Oh, there was something else that I saw. Yeah. And this kind of rolls us into events. So there's something, yeah, something coming up January 8th. If you are an Anaheim Ducks fan, a Mighty Ducks fan, the movie, that's where it came from. uh, They're taking over Hollywood land at DCA with meet and greets, hockey themed activities, photo opportunities, special decor, comma more. So with the and more, (laughs) they're going to have an Anaheim Ducks spirit jersey and it looks sick. We are Ducks fans. Actually, Tabitha's wearing a Ducks sweater as we speak. Oh, I am. <laughs> um, we are big Ducks fans, so I'm really excited about this day because we missed it last time. They're even going to have specialty Ducks foods. Oh, my God. I didn't see that part. Yes. There oh, that's is great. going to be hockey puck themed brownies, orange shakes at Schmoozies, and a macaron at Award Wieners that is going to have the original Mighty Ducks logo. on. So if you want to know where to find us on January 8th, it's there. So I'm really excited about the Anaheim Ducks spirit jersey. I will own one. I haven't been, a, you know me, I've been a critic of these spirit jerseys. And it's not because of the way they look. It's not what they're putting on them. It's the material they used. They're like t-shirts. They're like thick, like... Like thick, long sleeve t-shirts. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it, but I want, I want something exactly like that, but a sweatshirt. Nah, that'd be too thick. No, it's winter. Literally as of this week, it's winter. It's cold. I just want the duck's ears. The duck's ears are, look amazing. The coolest thing. Yeah. I will be first in line. No, you, you, if you're a duck's fan, you're in for a treat because it's going to be a lot of great food. Now that I know food, uh, mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of great merchandise and it's going to be fun uh, being able to meet the, the team and have all these activities. So some other events. Tell me about this tea thing. Ooh. So I had a friend that posted about it the other day. Um, it's a normal thing that they do at the Disneyland Hotel. They do afternoon tea yes. um, on the weekends. But until the 31st of this month, so there's not much time left. So try to squeeze in where you can. They're doing the holiday tea time at the Disneyland Hotel. Um, it's the same pricing, $55 for the classic tea time and $70 for the premium, um, which I haven't done the tea time. So I had to do a little bit of research on that to see like what the differences are. And then um, so for classic tea party, it's just your normal teas, desserts, sandwiches, scones, whatnot um, with a premium tea party. They also include wine, salads, some truffles, a couple extra little goodies for you. And then they also have a, um, a menu for kids as well. So um, I was looking at some of the photos for the holiday one and everything is so cute and so like holiday Christmassy themed. I wish we had the time to go down and do it because it looks adorable. I mean, if anything, when we talk about this stuff, if it's too late to catch this time, make sure we catch it the next time. Exactly. But it did make me interested in just doing the afternoon tea 
in general, not even like trying to make it for the holiday one because it looks really cute. And from what my friend had said, like it's a nice way to like get away from the parks, kind of wind down, gather yourself for a little bit because it's like 12 to 3, I think it is. You obviously don't have to stay like three hours um, because they have different reservations that you can make. But it'd be nice to just go sip some tea, collect yourself. Sounds like fun. Yeah, it sounds like a blast. So check it out. You can do the holiday one up until the 31st of December. Yeah, that sounds great. Tea time. Mm -hmm. So last time we talked about these Disneyland After Dark events. Mm -hmm. And the first one that we're going to talk about uh, is actually on January 29th, 2020. Coming up pretty soon, actually. So yeah, get not your that tickets. Far away. We've reiterated a lot Tick-ted. last time. Ticketed. <laughs> yeah, it, you have to pay extra for this one. It's one hundred and nine dollars per person, um, and that is uh, starting at six p.m. Six p.m. You can get into the park. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so it's like it's what like, they do for like the, the Hall- Halloween parties. Yeah, with the Halloween parties. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. So six p.m. You can get into the park. Nine o'clock is when the event starts, and it ends at one a.m. Okay. So one hundred nine dollars per person. Uh, tickets are available on the website. Um, but the so in researching this eighties night, I stumbled upon some really cool stuff, which I think we're going to bring into a larger conversation. Possibly, let's maybe. Oh next yeah, I week. heard. I heard okay. bits and pieces. So of let that me video. talk about this really quick, and and then we'll we'll kind of discuss what we're going through for the next one. So. Uh, The Disneyland website reads, join us for an after hours party that will transport you back to the 80s. Relive this nostalgic era, meeting some of your favorite and totally awesome characters, writing some popular attractions and dancing the night away at the reimagined Videopolis. Yes, (laughs) they're bringing back Videopolis. And don't forget to rock that signature 80s look. Yeah. Like totally radical. Totally. Uh, So, yeah. So. This this kind of opened a can of worms because in looking into this, I didn't realize I don't know if I gl- just glanced over it or I didn't see it, but they're doing a reimagined Videopolis. Do you know about video Videopolis? I was listening a little bit to the video you were watching earlier, but other than that, I know nothing. OK, so I'm really excited that I stumbled upon this information because I knew very little about Videopolis because even I was very young when Videopolis was around. It it ran from 1985 to 1989 at Disneyland. Oh. And so this was very uh it's it's like an early version of what Mad Tea Party kind of became. Oh. And so they ha- you know Disneyland was going through this time where Michael Eisner wanted to appeal to teenagers and so they built this high-tech amphitheater. They had videos. They had daytime shows. But then it turned into a nightclub at night okay, for the so, teenagers. Yeah. So I think I would like to put a little bit more research into this topic and pull it in and talk about kind of what the evolution of entertainment in this regard looks like at Disneyland. Because there's Videopolis in the 80s. Uh, they had uh, that Tron experience mm. uh, at DCA, Electronica. Oh, right. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. And well, that's what was around before Mad Tea Party. And then Mad Tea Party came around and that was around for a few years. And then I think they kind of gave up on the idea of having any kind of like rave at Disneyland. So there's not really anything over there anymore, right? No, now, it's, it's just the bar dead over there. There's a bar and it's, you know, the entrance to where you can meet Captain Marvel and, mm. and Black, Black Panther. Panther, but there's, yeah, there's a bar over there and it's just big open space. It's kind of a bummer. a bummer. They still have that smaller stage over there. Yeah. Uh, and they do. So they did the descendants dance party for oh, yeah, Oogie, Boogie Oogie Bash. Bash. Oogie Boogie Bash. Uh, and then they also use it for like school performances and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I see a lot of the um, the dancers up there like all the time when they're doing their little competition thingies. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the last time I watched. So a little uh, fun fact. I used to teach dance um, in when I lived in Colorado and I taught hip hop to a very amazing group of students. Um but we came down and they performed on that stage, gosh, six years ago. I oh, think wow. the last time I was out there and watched a performance there besides that Descendants thing. 
Oh, I so. actually, I think I do remember you doing that because that was when I still had a Southern California pass and yeah. I was already blocked out. So yes. you left me behind. Yeah, because it was during Disneyland. Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was on Thanksgiving, actually. Yeah. yeah. You ditched me. I did. You know, you got to do what you got to do. This Whatever. Disney thing is a, is a, <laughs> it's a, an, an itch that needs some scratching. Uh, so, yeah, so there's some really cool facts about this Videopolis run uh, that they did in the 80s that I'd really like to delve into and kind of. And I'm sure there's plenty of video all lots over Lots of place. information out there. So we're going to talk about that a little bit next week. Um, but I will give a little bit of a teaser. New Kids on the Block. Your favorite. That's all I'm going to say. Yo, yes, hanging tough. <laughs> so on that note, I think we're going to take a little bit of a break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about what's next for Magic on Main Street and Christmas. That's brings us back. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what you guys hear during that break. <laughs> but what I heard was a lot different. Uh, I made my own jingle. Take a look beautiful. at our Instagram and we'll I'll put up a clip and let you know exactly what you missed out. On. No. <laughs> yeah. Our Instagram, by the way, at magic on main pod magic on main and I pod for podcast. I heard a little rumor that there might be a giveaway happening soon. Yes, there is going to be a giveaway happening on our Instagram. So keep an eye out. Ooh. It's yeah, we're going to be posting about it in the next week. Um, I have a, I won't give away what the item is, but it is a park exclusive Ooh. and it's pretty darn awesome. I like it. That's all I give you. I'm looking at it. It's okay. Yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh. Okay. So speaking of getting ahead of ourselves, uh, a little bit about what's coming next for the Magic on Main Street podcast. So next week, we're going to have a special merchandise correspondent. One of our great dear friends is going to come in and talk about all the great merchandise she's been experiencing lately and what's coming next. Maybe a little bit about what her favorite items are for now. Should we give away who it is? We should. Should we? Yeah. Okay. It's exciting. You probably know her. You probably follow her on, on Instagram. It's the great, amazing, super fun at Disneylandia. Disneylandia. So if you don't follow her, uh, she's a great, great person. Uh, her handle is at Disney underscore Landia, L-A-N-D-I-A. -A. Uh, she's got a great Instagram. She's been building her audience over the past, gosh, seven years, I think. We met her in 2013. Yeah. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that with her. Um, but yeah, so we've got her coming on to talk about merchandise. If you do follow her, you know already that she is the queen of merchandise. And so yes. it's such a great fit for her to come on and talk about that topic because she knows all of it. Yeah. As of today, she has 45.9 thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah, she has a few. Albie's popping. It's a couple. But yeah, so join us next week when we talk about merchandise at the parks with Disneylandia. Also, we have a Patreon. I, I don't know. <laughs> Tabitha, I don't even know if you know what goes I on on this thing. Don't. Um, and, I let Sean do all the hard work and I just sit here and look pretty. Yeah, you do a great job at it. Um, Aww. Yeah, you're pretty. Aww. I mean, I did marry you. You're so sweet. This isn't even flirting. This is just facts. <laughs> Aww. Facts. Look at you. Um, but... We're about to have to get a new friggin' sound engineer over here. He's gonna get fired. Oh no! Make him. He gave he gave up the maybe hand weird. for Tabitha. Yeah, 
punch him. But yes, yeah, so we're going to be we're going to be doing some really cool tiers on Patreon. I have a very cool idea for our top tier, which is going to get some limited edition merch uh, only for that level of subscriber. So check us out on Patreon. Uh, our tiers are going to be changing because we don't know what we're doing. All I know is we're going to go broke doing this thing. <sighs> I don't want to talk about that. We're in it for the long haul. That we are. So, our Patreon, if you want to check it out now, it's just patreon.com slash magic on Main Street. Magic on Main Street. Oh. We're going to have a musical guest. We are going to have a regular musical guest, I believe. We're talking with a very magical young lady by the name of Kaylin Manoa. At Kaylin Marie Music on Instagram. She is a young, bright, musical superstar, if you ask me. She's wonderful. Yeah, she does a lot of, um, She, I mean, she does a great amount of covers for sure. Mm -hmm. But she's a singer-songwriter. She writes her own stuff, and her originals are amazing. She makes me cry. She did make us cry. She sang at our wedding, She sang at our wedding. She played guitar and sang at our wedding, and she did a beautiful little song for us, and it was so heartwarming. And she's got such a gorgeous voice. It's it's so much more mature than any other 16-year-old I have ever heard. Yeah. It's insane. And also, she's hilarious. She's so funny. She's like one of the funniest people I know. It helps that her parents are hilarious as well. They are. Yeah, these are our... Best friends, that's family. Our, our that's family. That's our family. Yeah, we, we consider them family. We're with them at holidays and all that stuff. But yeah, so you're going to get a chance to meet Kaylin uh, at some point soon. But she is going to be providing music for us for our breaks. Yay! Yeah, isn't that cool? You guys don't want to hear the songs that I sing. No. Well, you will, <laughs> but only on our Instagram. <laughs> Click that So that's what's button. coming up next. All right. I think that brings us to our main topic. Dun, da, da, da. It's the most wonderful, wonderful time, time of the year. year. Bum, bum, it's Christmas. Bum. It's the holidays at Disneyland Park. And it's exciting. Best. Christmas is a great time. Like I said, I think I said this last week. You call me a Grinch. You are. And I'm not. I'm not a Grinch. I love Christmas. You're a Grinch until December 1st. I'm a Grinch until the day after Thanksgiving. Dumb. And then I love Christmas. I just want to celebrate the holidays. And uh, yeah, if you're listening out there, Kaylee, yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Christmas does not belong in November. Let, oh, Scar's here. He said hello. Hey, Scar the kitten. Yeah, I, I, I just, I don't know. I think it, it's, I love Christmas and it's the right time now. So we're going to talk about Christmas. The right time now. It is Christmas. It's that's If you're listening yeah. to this right now, it's Christmas. It is Christmas right <laughs> as we speak. The second. Yeah. So we're talking about Christmas. So if you think that you've missed out on Christmas at Disneyland, you have not. Christmas you still lasts have until January. A full week until January 6th when everybody's everything starts changing over back to normal. Still just as magical. It's still as magical, but you will not be able to experience things like a Christmas fantasy parade. Which is such a pretty parade. It really is. And I hear people all the time and I'm not a see, and this is how you know I'm not a Scrooge. When people say, oh, we got we got Christmas fantasy again. Yes, we get we are allowed. We are given (laughs) the privilege privilege. (laughs) to have Christmas fantasy again. It's so nostalgic. It's I, I mean. That parade opened in the mid nineties. That's a long running parade. Yeah. So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that parade uh, as we get into our topic. But as of right now, you can still experience a Christmas fantasy parade. Believe in holiday magic fireworks show on main street. It snows. It's so pretty. And it smells like cinnamon. It it does smell like cinnamon. (laughs) You know, actually, if you, if you want to find the best smelling spot, in Disneyland, head into Fantasyland, go over to the Christmas ornament shop, yeah. and just take a whiff. That is the best smelling area of any place in this world. We asked one of the last times we were in there what the smell was, and she said they have their own special blend that they've yeah, made. It's like nutmeg and cinnamon and, and orange and orange. all kinds yeah. of stuff, it's so that crazy. it smells like Christmas year round. Mm-hmm. In this and it store. does, and it's it's beautiful. 
Uh, but also Haunted Mansion Holiday. The last day to ride this is January 20th because Not remember January 6th, like no, a lot of them. Because remember we said last time that they're going to be doing a, a, refurb- a refurbishment when they switch it over. Mm-hmm. And then it's a small world holiday. The last day to ride that is the 6th. Um, and the castle, you have to see the castle in person if you haven't. Before all of its pretty If you can't see it this year, if you have not been here this year and you can't make it work for this year, plan for next holiday. It's worth it. I think that these times are the best times to do it. They it might really be is. a it's little so bit pretty and sparkly yeah. and just bright. I and love it. People talk about the crowds and, and how bad it is, but it's really you have ways it's to manageable. get manageable. You have and, ways to get it. And you have it. people like us that'll help guide you through the parks. Yes. I mean, we I'll actually get you from need point to finish to making a guide right now because I have a coworker that's going on Christmas and I told her I'd help her out. Yeah. I mean, you it's doable. So if you think that it's not a good time to go, it's so fun. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. And if you haven't learned this yet, they have great food. They do. Their holiday food is fantastic. It really is. Um, something that we haven't really talked about. Uh, with the holiday stuff, though, is Viva Navidad. We haven't touched on that at all. I know. And Viva Navidad is so much fun. We talked about the Mariachi Divas last week, but that was really the only thing that they like consider Viva Navidad that we touched on. Yeah. So I think that uh, this is the best time to do that. So Viva Navidad, the... Uh, There's a lot of things going on with this special event, and it's actually going until the 6th, like most other things. Uh, They have a few different things. They've got the Viva Navidad Street Party, where you can join the Three Caballeros for this little fun music and dance uh, show, where they have giant puppets. I don't even know how to say this word. Mojiganga? Oh. All right. I can't help you, They also have... Uh, this is something that's a little bit more limited and you do have time for this because it starts on January 3rd and it runs through January 6th. So just three days, but it's three Kings day. And I don't know if you're aware of uh, the whole three Kings day. It honors the three, three wise men. Oh, okay. So over in paradise gardens, they have this, this event that honors the epiphany or the 12th day of Christmas. And it's celebrated around, celebrated around the world in many different ways. And the holiday is known as, El Día de los Reyes Magos in Central and South America, as well as Mexico. That's a nice little tidbit of information to have. Yeah. So kind of touching on the whole Latin American tradition thing. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's I think it's uh, I think it's going to be fun. We got to check that one out. So remember, that's going to be January 3rd to January 6th. You have three days to experience that one. And it sounds like a blast. Go, go, go. But. They've always done a good job with that, though. Viva Navidad has always been like the best part of the holidays, I think, mm-hmm. um, in DCA. Yeah. Everything else is great. You know, they've got all the Cars Land decorations and, you know, a lot of really things proprietary to DCA. But Viva Navidad is probably my favorite. I'm just a big sucker for like Mexican culture and Latin American culture. You really are. Yeah, I know. It helps that you. I think our cat and the dog are fighting or the cat is fighting himself. (laughs) I think he's fighting himself. (laughs) Um, What I was going to say was um, it helps that you very much so enjoy Latin food. I do. Mexican food is my food is a big part of culture. Yes. And Mexican food takes the cake when it comes to. My 99% of the time, if I say, Sean, preference. what do you want? He's like, I don't know, Mexican. It's either Mexican or pizza. Yeah. But I really enjoy how much they've turned um, the Paradise Gardens area into, a, into more of a Hispanic-themed area during these special events. They do... Dia de los Muertos. They, yeah, okay. So they, they theme out that Paradise Gardens area during... Halloween for Dia de los Muertos. Mm -hmm. And then during Christmas time, they theme it out for Viva Navidad. Mm -hmm. I think here's, and this is, this is just me and chime in everybody who thinks yay or nay. I think they should just change that area over to just be like Coco themed. It would work. I mean, 
it would just be like an extension of the pier. Well, and it, yeah, I mean, you're just, it's just bleeding over a little bit from mm. Paradise Pier. I mean, if they just made that. It's Pixar Pier now. I'm sorry. I, what did I say? Paradise? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking Paradise you're Gardens. stuck in no, Pixar, 2017. Yeah. No, Pixar Pier. I mean, it already goes that far. Why not just extend it to yeah, one it more? Would work. It would work. It would, one, it would work you know, really well. Just one restaurant, a couple restaurants. I don't know. I think that it fits, it fits so well when Coco was over there doing their Halloween show. And now that they're there for Viva Navidad, it just, it kind of solidifies in my head that that should just be Pixar themed. It, it fits. It fits. So Disney people, if hey, you're Disney listening. Disney folks, <laughs> holler at your boy. Is that what the kids Stupid. say these days? Anywho. What are we talking about? Yes. Yeah, so Three Kings Day, January 3rd through 6th. That's going to be at Paradise Gardens. And uh, it, it's going to be a good time. So in thinking about Christmas, I started reminiscing like, oh, do you remember Disneyland as a kid? And I don't. I don't really either. Like I, I, I do. I remember going because it's my mom's favorite time of year. So I know we were there. But I don't remember specifics. Yeah. Well, in my case, you know, yours was like a long, 400 long time years ago, ago. Long time ago. <laughs> but in the 80s is really, I think like the 80s, 90s is when Disney really got big in Christmas. They had they had things going on, but it was not a big thing until, you know, the past couple decades. Which is so weird because I can't imagine ever going to a Disneyland that is not decked out. It's crazy, right? Because Disneyland goes all out. So it's a huge deal. We've got parades. We've got shows. They theme the entire resort. Oh, and what was I reading earlier about like just plants alone? The amount that they bring in for the holidays over 100,000 additional plants and like poinsettias and garlands, like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. How many Christmas trees they say they had? Over 300 Christmas trees across the resort. Wow. That's so many Christmas trees. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. And you don't you don't really realize it until you look around and you know that's there's that many that's out. So many Christmas I, trees. We, people look around. You, know, you, you have no idea Christmas what's around. Tree on every corner, dang. Yeah, but on top of that, you know the castle's always strung with tons and tons of lights and icicles, and it looks so beautiful. Um, but the centerpiece is always that humongous Christmas tree. It is so in town square. Big. Yeah. They use a crane to put it in, don't they? In like three pieces. It's huge. Insane. And it used to be, okay, so it used to be a live tree. It used to be a huge live tree. And I don't know when they changed that. How is that? that possible? It was a big tree. Dang. Yeah. Uh, but now it's all alive. Like, how do you keep it from not? I don't like, know. I would love to like hear crazy. that story. Um, anybody knows. And I, well, I mean, I know the, the information's out there, but different, ta- different, different time and place. Um, but yeah, so back in, so let's, let's take a trip in history back to 1955. So the park opens in July, their first Christmas in December, you know, they've been open for a a, a number of months and their, so their decorations when it came to Christmas in 1955, far less elaborate. And a lot of it was because they didn't have big crowds. They said that on some days the park attendance was like a few hundred people. Could you imagine? No, no, I can't. That would be amazing. I mean, I've been. It would to be Disneyland devastating on, for them oh, now. They sure. only have a couple hundred. Yeah, people. I've been there on light days, but no, I mean, a couple hundred people. That's crazy. But remember, in 1955, Disneyland Inc. was a company that was completely separate from Walt Disney Productions. And so they didn't have any of the um, the studio funds to to put into any of this. So they that were really sense. on their own. And it was up to their own budgets. Yeah. You know? So the park just, they just couldn't afford a big Christmas celebration at the time. Um, and you know, throughout the park, there were some decorations but nowhere near what it is now everywhere you look there's a christmas de- decoration around the parks they have wreaths they have garlands yeah. even just like bows randomly yeah. placed and another cool thing to know is back in 55 good old 1955 um the christmas tree was first introduced but not on not in town square it was at the hub Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I remember. I mean, the, the I'm sure they didn't have the 
the statue the there. partner statue yeah so back then the hub was empty it was just i mean it was floral the partner statue didn't even come into the park until 1993 that would be so weird to not see the Christmas tree as soon as I walked into the park. Weird, right? You'd have to get, I mean, and because you come through the is, tunnel and that's the first thing your eye is drawn to. Yeah. And I mean, emplacement wise, and I'm sure it wasn't as big back then, but you know, when you're walking up main street, when you get past town square, the first thing you want to see is the castle. Yeah. So I if wouldn't you, want if you got past town square and the first thing you saw was a tree blocking the castle, I don't know about that. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Cause I mean, the statue there is minimal, you know, when it comes to viewing, you can see past yeah, the statue. It's only like what? A six foot statue. No, nah, it's like nine feet. Oh, dang. I, was, I think I was a few feet off. Um, yeah, I, I think it's like nine foot tall, something like that. Because he was like, he was like, he wasn't even six foot tall. So if you think him, actually, no, I've, I heard they actually made him taller in the statue. The statue is six feet, five inches, which is seven inches taller than Walt Disney himself. Yeah, but that's the statue. That's not the base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So probably, yeah, probably about nine feet. So in 1955, the hub receives the first Disneyland Christmas tree. They hung a few wreaths around the castle with a strand or two of garland and um, the drawbridge. They changed out the, the banners with darker ones so that they were more wintry than summery. That just seems so bare. Yeah. Um, and then they, they did decorate some with some greenery in front of Frontierland, the entrance. Um, but the biggest thing that Disneyland itself ever arranged for Christmas was the Christmas bowl, which was basically just them retheming the outdoor stage that they had. Okay. And, uh, you know, they put in some, they actually used artificial trees, which is wild because they're so big on horticulture. horticulture. Yeah. <laughs> um, they have a whole tour. Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. Um, which we have not done yet, and I really want to check yeah, that out I because do that one. it's it's very interesting. We have um, we have a, a friend who did it. Yes, and they said it was great, yeah. so I'm looking forward to it. And it's called Cultivating the Magic. Yes, right? Yes. Yeah, Cultivating the Magic. I think that's name. it's a cute name. We did uh, Walk in Walt's Footsteps, um, but we have not done the Cultivating Gosh, the we Magic. We did that. Oh gosh, that was six years ago, five years ago. Five years ago, yeah, 2014. Quite a while. We need to do it again. I want to see how it's changed. Yeah. Ooh, that's something we can talk about. Yeah. For anybody that's been on it before and hasn't seen it recently. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so they had, you know, they had a few artificial trees uh, and the bowl actually featured choirs singing Christmas carols. And that's actually where uh, kind of the idea for the candlelight ceremony and processional came from oh yeah kind of oh, a little you know. precursor to that um but the parades so parades have always been a thing i don't want to say always been a thing it started in 1958 um but it's been a pretty big piece of christmas ever since 58 so the first parade at disneyland debuted in 1958 and it was called the christmas in many lands parade but in 61, they changed that name to the Parade of Toys and Parade of All Nations. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and then they switched it back. <laughs> I can see why. It's a weird name. Yeah. They switched it back <laughs> to uh, Christmas in Many Lands Parade in... Shortly after that. Uh, and that went until 1964. So between... 1958 and 1964. That's how many years? Six. I'm good at math. Thanks. Thanks for the assist. You're welcome. I don't do math on the spot. <laughs> but uh, the following year, so in 1965, it became Fantasy on Parade. And that was the name that they kept for a while. And so it wasn't until the 80s that the park brought in a new parade and called it a Very Merry Christmas Parade. That's... That's 20 years of a parade. Yeah. 60s till sometime in the 80s. That's about 20 years. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. That's a very long time. Hmm. But yeah, so in the 80s, uh, they, they had the Very Merry Christmas Parade. And finally, in the mid-90s, so another decade goes by, 
and a Christmas fantasy parade makes its way onto Main Street USA. Huh. And they just improve it every year by yeah. adding really cute stuff. Yeah, I was thinking back last last time we had talked about um Frozen yes. and how Frozen has made it into so many of their parades. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, um do you remember when they debuted Frozen in the parade? Yes. It was a pre show. Yes. That they, was pretty cool. They came out like a couple, like a little bit before the rest yeah. of the, the parade. Yeah, did. probably about 10, 15 minutes. They would mm-hmm. bring out Frozen, which is the, which single, is the same float. float. Yeah. yeah, it's the same float. And Anna and Elsa would talk to the crowd. Olaf was that talking. That was before was, anybody even knew who Anna and Elsa was yeah. because the movie hadn't even yeah. come out yet. They were just pushing had them really hard. Had it not come hard. out? I don't think it, I think it was come like it had, it, it was, was coming very out that new holiday season. At most. Yeah. It was very new. Well, yeah, because I remember meeting Anna and Elsa over in Fantasyland with Kenzie. Oh, and, yeah. They were in that little And they were in that little room. Weird, weird room and they <laughs> queued it right next to Pinocchio. Pinocchio. And it took us, gosh, I think we waited in line for two hours. And I we can't finally, imagine you waiting in a yeah, line for me two hours in line. to princess no, that you was, don't even know. This was before I became a Disneyland diva <laughs> and wouldn't wait more than 30 minutes for a ride. Um, but yeah, we waited two hours to meet Anna and Elsa. And when we got in there, Kenzie was so little and so cute. And she was like, I was like, you excited? She's like, yeah. Like, <laughs> looking forward to meeting Anna and Elsa. And she's like, yeah. And looking at me like, who the heck Who's is Anna, Anna and Elsa? Elsa? Um, so yeah, that was, that was a good time. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But something that's always been a part of Christmas, uh, as far as Walt Disney world goes is the parade. So they first telecast the, um, it was the Walt Disney world's very merry Christmas parade in 1983. So it was a while after, um, it was a while after the, the parades in Disneyland, but this is what was being televised. Uh, so crazy. Yeah, it became like the the televised program. And uh, back in 1983, Joan London and Mike Douglas were the hosts. And they went through a few different hosts over the years. So Alan Thicke was a host. Um, Regis Philbin was like an interviewer. And then he took over as co-host. And then um, Kelly Ripa joined in. So it's been this like long history of parades telecast on uh, from Walt Disney World. And so... Over the years, so between like the 80s and the 90s, they've gone through a bunch of changes as far as the names go. But, you know, it's it's the same Disney theme. They've got really cool floats, really good dancers, um, lots of good music. And so in the in the 80s and 90s, this program became the Walt Disney World Very Merry Christmas Parade. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, because um, I mean, I've I've watched it before. Yeah. Like, I, I remember watching it as a kid, too. Yeah. Because it was, like, it was it was always super memorable because Mickey Mouse was on TV, and it wasn't, right. like, a cartoon. Right. And we didn't go much as kids. Like, it was expensive. Yeah. And, you know, like, it was it was a, a big deal. Which, well, and you had a lot of people in your family. Yeah, there were four kids. We went, we went every year, but I was the only child. So. Yeah. When I, when I think back to, like, Disneyland memories, it's not much as a kid yeah it's more like middle school yeah. high school at some point like it became like a thanksgiving thing to do for us but that was very oh. short-lived yeah it was very it was really strange but yeah so uh in the 80s and 90s they changed th- th- this okay so this parade has just changed names a, a lot. lot um it became the walt disney world christmas day parade um from 2009 to 2013. So more recently it became, it was referred to as the Disney parks Christmas day parade. Um, and for a, uh, a few years Mm -hmm. after that, uh, they would change their name on a yearly basis in 2014. It was the Disney parks, frozen Christmas celebration, frozen shocker. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2015, it was the Disney parks, unforgettable Christmas celebration. And then 2016 and 2017, it was the Disney parks, magical Christmas celebration. But then in 2018, (laughs) this is a long history of names, uh, Disney parks, magical Christmas day parade. What was it this year? Same thing. Oh, it was Mm -hmm. okay. So they're going with every two years. Maybe now it needs, they need to slow down on the names. Yeah, so if there's anything we know about Disneyland and Christmas, uh, it's they love to showcase their parades during this time. And then also when you have the 
believe in holiday magic fireworks, it makes for a good time. It makes for a lot of memories, a lot of smiles. Yes. Lots of um, tears. <laughs> lots of tears. Yeah. You, you know, when they start, uh, when they start doing all the Christmas stuff, I mean, I, I do remember the first time I saw it snow at mm-hmm. Disneyland. Um, and that was an emotional time. Yeah. Because I still get teary eyed. Yeah. I mean, I, I get the feels every time I'm there and I don't use that phrase at all. Oh yeah. <laughs> Weird. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I remember standing on main street and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't oh, cold, <laughs> you know? So to be standing on main street, USA in Disneyland in California, I mean, we never really have cold winters and then it starts snowing or snoping. Snope. <laughs> Let it snope. Um, you know, it's just something magical that I think everybody should experience. I think it's great for I'm kids. Right with it's you. great for the adults. Whether you love Disney or not, Disneyland is a great place to go. So I say go. Don't get scared off by the crowds because, listen. They're not that bad. They're not that bad. And you, th- it's If Disneyland. you go into it with a mindset of, it's Disneyland, there's going to be people there. Just That's plan all you need. for it. Just know that you need to plan for it. That's all. And you'll always find a friend in in us with giving you advice on when to go, where to go. I if I don't care if I talk to you every day or if I haven't talked to you since 2011. If you need guidance on Disneyland, I am more than happy to help. Yeah, so that's why I up. go. Yeah, and if no, we started not. these. I go no, for it's me. Not. Not we go for, for us. Guys. We're very selfish people. <laughs> That's not true. Um, but yeah, so we we've got our Instagram that you can talk to us on. Um, you can say hi there or ask us any questions that you want to. So that's at Magic on Main Pod, and then we actually have an email address. It's just a Gmail. We're not fancy with a website yet, nah. but we're getting there. Um, and that is Magic on Main Street Pod at Gmail dot com. So don't forget, Christmas is going on until January 6th. Um, they've got a lot to do still. There's still plenty of time. If you haven't made your trip down. Swoop on in there. Get in there. It's fun. It's worth it. It is worth it. I think Christmas is such a magical time. And um, that, that's a lot coming from a Grinch. Grinch. Let's Mr. Keep it Disney. Scrooge. Let's keep it Disney themed. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Scrooge McDuck. So yeah, I think that brings us to one of my favorite parts of the show. It's the quote of the week. Quote of the week, quote, quote, quote you know, of the week. Bing, bing. Uh, is that our jingle for quote yep. of the week? <laughs> so I, I have fun with quote of the week because I use Walt Disney quotes a lot. I've used them in Instagram pictures and quotes on Facebook. Like I just, he's always You're got inspirational. He, he there, he is very inspirational. He always had the right thing to say. So, and this one, you know, we got a little bit touchy, not touchy. What's the word? Sappy in the last episode because. Sappy. We are fighting for this podcast because we're having so much fun doing it. And it's something that we are passionate about. We love Disneyland. We love Disney. We love the parks. We love the culture. We love everything about it. And so we are just trying to spread the magic to you. And so, you know, that being said, we have to fight because we have day jobs and we have bills and we have all these things that we've got to worry about that a podcast probably isn't going to be top of mind, but it really is. It is. Yeah. It's we become, talk about it every yeah, day. We talk about it a lot. And it's something that our friends are enjoying. And I'm really happy about that. Friends, family, coworkers. Yeah. My coworkers are like raving. And it means so much to me. So when they finally listen to this episode and they hear this, I appreciate you. We appreciate you, guys. you. Everybody that's supported us so far. And this I had, might. St- I had one of my coworkers go up to Daniel because he was wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt and be like, oh, you like Disney? You should listen to Tab with his new podcast. Not realizing that he Daniel is the does colonel. The he is the colonel. <laughs> she was like, I felt so stupid, That's but it so was great. so sweet. No, and it's great. And and you know, this doesn't. This isn't a. Uh, this isn't a, a a a huge brag or anything. Um, but we've already had almost two hundred downloads. What? Yeah, I didn't know that for something that I just wanted to do for fun, just to kind of hear myself talk. Mm-hmm. That's tremendous. That's huge. That's amazing. And that I was saying, so if five people listen to each episode, I'll be happy. And guess what? You guys 200. have made me happy. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks, uh, guys. All that being said, this quote here is something that I listen to a lot. Um, and it goes like this. Walt Disney said, 
All the adversity I've had in my life, all my troubles and obstacles have strengthened me. You may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. And I think that's a very, very, very accurate statement. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, We've all been kicked in the teeth. Quite a few times. Yeah, a few times. But I didn't want to leave without a Christmas quote. And Walt wasn't big on Christmas quotes, I've found. So I'm going to leave it with this. And it comes from a great, great Disney classic uh, holiday movie, The Santa Claus. And it says, seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. Cute. Oh, so cute. But that's our quote of the week. I love it. Yeah, it's good stuff. So on that note, we do want to thank you again for joining us. We know you have limited time in your lives to spend on entertainment and fun. So we're glad that you chose to listen here. And this adventure has been so much fun for the two of us. And I'm so glad that you're along for the ride. If you have any comments, questions, or any stories you may want to share with us and our audience, make sure you hit us up on Instagram. You can find us on at magic on main pod or email us at magic on main street pod at gmail.com and also become a Patreon subscriber. That's a thing. We have a couple things, uh, a couple tiers set up and you can find out more information at patreon.com slash magic on main street. Lastly, Make sure you subscribe, leave a review, and help us spread some magic by sharing our little podcast with the Disney lovers in your lives. They want to know the information we're talking about. So on behalf of Tabitha, Daniel, Scar the Kitten, our little house guest Stella, and myself, thank you so much for listening to the Magic on Main Street podcast. See you real soon. Savor the challenge and promise of